We're geared into the holiday season with today's episode of What's Happening in Wapaka. Bill Pimple will join us to give us all the details about the taste of Christmas. We'll learn more about the volunteer ombudsman program, go off-site with the 4-H, get to meet some talented high school artists, and feature the pet of the month. I'm Joni Kern, and this is What's Happening in Wapaka. Our first guest today is Bill Pimple from Spencer Lake. Welcome. We saw you last Thank year, you. so it's good to see you again. You too. We're talking about Taste of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now, I was there actually last year, and it was a ton of fun. You have so many things on the grounds, and the grounds are beautiful. So tell me about some of the things that you've got going on there this year. Well, once again, we've got Santa's Yuletide Workshop going on. That's where all the kids will come and... Uh, visit Santa, get pictures with Santa, and then they can make an ornament or gingerbread house decoration. And I know that's a huge room for the kids. That yeah. was full of kids last year. Yeah, so that's in our main dining hall overlooking mm -hmm. the lake. And then downstairs there's a children's story corner hosted by the Wapaka Library team. Um, we've got the holiday treat shop back. It's going to be bigger and fuller than ever. We've got... And... You have kettle corn coming this year. We do. Which is one of my favorite treats in the entire world. So the guy there is with kettle corn. Yep, he'll be right outside the treat shop. And then adjacent to that will be the bonfire again. Kids can roast marshmallows and make their way over to the celebration hall where we'll have all the live music playing. Madrigals will be there throughout the day. Charlie Justman Band will be back. You're doing a veterans tribute. Yes. Which was absolutely beautiful last year. I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. at 12.30 we'll do the uh, veterans and service personnel tribute again. And uh, the Madrigals will be on hand to do some special music for that. Fabulous. And uh, hopefully the fire trucks will be there again. We've got the Merchant Hall coming back, about 25 or so vendors with all their gifts and, and uh, opportunities to buy things there. I bought something there last year. Oh, good. I did. I bought a sign for my house. Very so, cool. yeah, it's it's just a really interesting, there's something there for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you have the animals coming back this the year? The animals will be back. There'll be about 18 of them for petting zoo and next to the manger, and yep. it'll be a nice, fun time. Yes, and you're right on the lake, so mm -hmm. you can take the sidewalk down to the lake, and you can just go skip a stone or whatever you want to do. Yeah, if it's ice, we'll be able to ice skate it's, down there. There so. you go. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, it's just beautiful grounds you have, and it's a huge setup. And there's great things for everybody. So I'm just saying it's a great thing to do. Now, your This Taste of Christmas benefits area organizations. So tell me who you're benefiting this year. We'll be benefiting the Wapaka Miracle Tree. We'll be a drop site for them this year. And uh, the Wapaka Pregnancy Information Center. And the uh, Wapaka Food Pantry. Mm -hmm. as well as the Wapaka schools because we've got the s school supply depot that we do and we take all those supplies and distribute them across the schools. And one of the things that I saw on this list was that you can get a free lunch for your kids, which is always mm -hmm. great, yeah. um, for with a $1 donation or a canned food item, which I'm assuming is going to go to the food pantry. Right, yeah. The so, uh, theme of the whole event is just giving back to the community and teaching others how to, you know, invest into the community and give and, you know, keep that cycle of goodwill going. Absolutely, and have a great time besides. Mm -hmm. So I will be looking forward. It's on December 7th. December 7th. We start at 10 o'clock, and it'll stop. It'll be all over by 5 o'clock. 4.30 is the closing celebration. We'll be sending off about 150 sky lanterns at the end of that evening. So that's always a neat thing to see in the full in the sky, all the lights going. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, be looking forward to it. Thanks again Thank for you. coming back on this year. My pleasure. You bet. Next, we're going to the Wapaka Community Arts Center to meet some absolutely amazing high school artists. Angie, master stylist. Operating off High Style Salon on 6th Street in Wapaka. Offering haircuts and coloring, nails, skin, and more. For more information, contact Angie at 920-850-3283 or email her. 
Master Stylist, proud sponsor of What's Happening Wapaka. Packet Community Arts Center tonight with the Emerging Visions Emerging Artists Show. Um, I have Barbara Weezy here who's going to introduce us to a little bit about what's happening on the show. But we are actually here, Barbara, to highlight four local high school artists. Is that correct? That is right. We have three artists, uh, visual artists, and one musical artist here today, this evening. And we have um, their work up um, through January 14th. So anytime between now and January 14th, feel free to come in. The artists are Allie Karlovsky and Taryn Walkish, Amanda Durfee, and then Natalie Mast is the musician. So we're going to spend just a little bit of time talking to all four of them and showing off their art. And we have Natalie's music that's going to be playing in the background, which is great. It's nice to her to add a little bit of ambiance to this but I want to thank you for inviting us tonight here because um, it is always a pleasure to be able to show off local artists and we love to have people come in and see the local artists here it's at 200 North Main Street very accessible right by the arch that goes down to the park and you have a website so we can get all the information off that as well that's w-c-a-c-e-n-t-e-r dot com and we also have a fa Facebook page Wapaka Community Arts Center. That is great. Thank you, Barbara, for your time and inviting us in tonight. Welcome and thank you for being here. We're talking to Natalie Mast, who's our keyboardist here um, during the show. Are you just here tonight or are you here for the entire show? I am just here tonight. Well, this was really a pleasure to have the music in the background that kind of sets us off. Now, we were talking a little bit about um, the keyboard. You also play piano, and you've been playing for how many years? Eight years. But you don't just play the piano. You play another instrument. So tell me what you play and where you play it. I play the clarinet in the concert band and marching band in the Wapaka High School. Plus the um, piano in... I play the piano in the jazz band at the Wapaka High School and I also take lessons from my piano teacher. Also in nursing homes too. <laughs> yeah, what nursing? You were telling me that you play in nursing homes. Which nursing homes do you play in? I have trouble with the names, but I play at one in Watoma and then a couple other ones. I think there was one in Stevens Point and then there was another one in Appleton and we just go around about our shows. And yeah. <laughs> I'll bet those people really enjoy hearing your music. You're very talented, so it's nice to highlight you tonight. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thanks for being here, Natalie. Thank you for having me. <laughs> We're talking to Ali Karvlovsky, um, who is one of the Wapaka High School artists here tonight. Welcome to the show and to the Wapaka Art Center. Thank you. <laughs> this must be really exciting because you were telling me this was the first time you've actually been at, had your artwork at a show? Um, this is my first like bigger show, I guess you could say. I've done like a few with school, but that's it. And you said that you've only been drawing for about three years. Um, like I've only been like really into it for a, for three years. I guess I've done it when I was little, but that doesn't really count because they're all like stick figures. So, so is this is this some of the stuff? And we're going to point out some of the pictures. Is this stuff that you like had to go to class to learn how to do, or is this natural? Um, some of it I've learned in class, and some of them I just done on my own. So. So this is, you must be very proud of yourself because to be a junior in high school at 16 years old and to have your art in a show I think is very exciting. Yeah, it's it's really exciting and it's kind of a cool thing to have people come and um, compliment me on it and get good reviews and like, oh, this is really nice, like I'd really like to have this, so that's nice. It's something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to point out a couple of the pictures that you have on the wall here and tell us just a little bit about them. We have this one, which is a drawing from a photograph, right? Yep, it's of my friends, and we're. It's like some. It was uh, last summer. We t took this picture, and I just drew it from a 
photograph. Okay. And you did a couple of really neat pieces that I want to show off over here because we have the bottom one and we have the top one. And these are drawn with words. You told me lyrics? Yep. They're um, with, with a Sharpie. They're lyrics from like um, my favorite artist of Ed Sheeran. And I just took um, pictures and some of that one's from memory and this one's from a picture. And I just did it with words. That I haven't ever seen anything like that before. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a close enough shot of that, but that is really um, interesting because I walked up to it and I could actually read some of the words. Yeah. Congratulations on your first big show and thanks for being with us and putting up with being interviewed. Thank you. Next we have Amanda Durfee. Welcome to the show, Amanda. Thank you. Congratulations on being part of this art show. That must You must be very proud of yourself. Yes, I feel very accomplished. You should. We were looking at some of your pictures earlier. You have kind of a Russian theme, so I'm going to ask you to explain that to us. All right. Well, ever since I was a little girl, I was obsessed with geography, so I had a globe. And Russia's a really big country, so I saw Russia right away. And I thought that was a really cool name. And since ever then, I love Russia. And you were in St. Petersburg this summer, so are we going to see a lot more Russian-themed pictures from you? Definitely. I love Russia. So. And you're a junior in high school, right? Yes. And you were telling me what you wanted to major in in college and what you wanted to do for the rest of your life, so tell me that too. I'd like to major in history and then do art on the side. You are very talented. These are very, very beautiful pictures. You have the one in the middle, which we want to point out, is Johnny Depp as Edward Scissorhand, which is a um, pretty incredible, incredible picture. And then you do, um, you did this one. I'm going to tell you who that picture is. Gerard Way. And then there's a couple of Russian themed ones. And then I want to show the, I want to show off your self portrait, which is an absolutely beautiful self portrait of yourself. Thank you. It's very, very good work. You're very talented. It's really been a joy being here and getting to know all of you. So congratulations, Amanda, and the best of luck in the future. I'm sure I'll see you all over New York in the art galleries, right? Definitely. All right. Okay, we're here with Taryn Walkish. Welcome, Taryn. Hey, thank you. It's nice to talk to you tonight about some of your artwork. Now, you've got artwork here um, at the show as well, and we're going to point some of that out. Um, now, you're a senior at Wapaka High. Yep. And I asked you what you were going to do with your future, and you said you were going to UW Platteville to study civil engineering. Yeah, that's right. I'm really into engineering and the mathematical part of the world. And how does the mathematics work in art? Um, well, you could look at it like the actual machinery tools. I have some tools here that show it and just how to actually put together the piece with measurements with like the metals and ceramics. Well, that's kind of fun. So you don't necessarily just eyeball it and say it looks good. You actually work at placement. Yeah, once in a while. <laughs> hey, you know, whatever works. I like your pieces, and we're going to show off this. It's a metal saw and a piece of barbed wire. Yep. And I recognize the barbed wire because I've stepped on it before. Um, but this is really fun. It's a little bit different. You said that you don't do a whole lot of drawings, so we have no. one picture back here that you did that I really enjoyed. Yep. But you do a lot with metal work, so I think this is kind of um, fun to have here. Why do you work with metal? I mean, what, what is it about that that's uh, special? I like working with metal to work with my hands, to really, like, move stuff, move pieces into there, like, cut out the pieces, actually make it what I want it to be, instead of with a pencil or a pen or something. I think that sounds like fun. I mean, the world is full of art. Not everybody draws, but everybody has some art in them except me, somewhere <laughs> along the line. But I like your metal work. That's, um, that's, it's fun to look at, and I like the way you use the different metals and the different colors together. Yeah. And I'll bet you engineering, as far as um, what you like to work with, with the metal as well as with the ceramic, is going to come in really handy. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. That's great. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I appreciate your time that you spent with me, and congratulations on being here at the show.
Last but not least, we are talking to Lee Schultz, who is the art teacher for all three of these students here. You have to feel immense pride with their accomplishments. This is just a fantastic show, and the way it all goes together, it wasn't planned, and it couldn't be better. Absolutely. Now, you've been a teacher for how long? About 15 years. And you oversee the entire art department at Wapaka High School? I do. So you've had a ton of artists come and go? Quite a few. Yes, I have. And you have shown your own art from time to time? I do show my art. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate you bringing your students to the forefront so that they can do things like these art shows um, and show off all of their incredible talent. You have some very talented students. Well, thank you very much. They are very cooperative and good students. Well, thank you so much for being part not only of the show, but being um, a teacher because it sounds like your students respect you a lot, and that means a lot. Oh, thank you very much. And they do have things for sale here. Just so you know, they have artwork that are prints and originals, and there's more than that's on the wall that's for sale. It helps fund their further education. Just I'm a little promo. I'm glad you mentioned that because there are there are prints down here um, that are for sale, and most of the stuff hanging on the wall, as well as a couple of the metal pieces, have been sold. I see that some they're going fast. So you can come in and go shopping again. Everything will be on display here until January 14th. So you can come in and do a little bit of holiday gift shopping as Great well. Great idea. Great idea. And get a get a one of a kind piece. The Revival in downtown Wapaka prides themselves in providing above and beyond customer service. From small to tall, women of any age can consider The Revival your professional, personal stylist, helping you find the right outfit for any occasion, weddings, senior pictures, or even a special night out. The Revival also specializes in home decor with a large selection and variety of items to choose from, including art from local Wapaka artists. The Revival, 111 West Fulton Street, across from Farmer State Bank, downtown Wapaka. For more information, call 715 5-281-5100 or find them on Facebook. The Revival, home, art, and fashion. If your organization would like to be featured on What's Happening Wapaka, let us know. Call us at 715-258-4405 or visit our website, wintvwapaka.com, for details. Our next guest this afternoon is Suzanne ankin Brandt. Welcome to the show. Hi, Joni. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You are a volunteer ombudsman and you work with the program. You actually work out of Stevens Point. But Wapaka County is one of your counties. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell me, because this is interesting, I want you to tell me a little bit about what the program does. Okay, um, I'm with the state of Wisconsin and through the Board on Aging and Long-Term Care, we recruit and train volunteer. And ombudsman means of the people. And the simpler way to translate it is they're advocates. Our volunteers are advocates for nursing home residents. They make weekly visits to nursing homes just to make sure that the residents are doing well, their residents' rights are protected, and if there's anything amiss, they can work with the uh, administration to make sure things are taken care of. And that's great to have because we've all heard the horror stories about nursing home care for people. So it's great to have people that go in just to make sure, not only the bad, mm -hmm. but also looking for the wonderful things. And you were telling me that the nursing homes here in Wapaka actually welcome your program. Yes, they've been very, very cooperative. There's some parts of the state where maybe that's not so, but we've had really good success working with our nursing home because the people that are running the nursing homes they they want to do right by the residents as well as as what we wanted for them and i like hearing that the wapaka area is great at that because um because some places i mean truly you hear some of the horror stories and they're not no any fun they're not good and they're our volunteers get to know the residents and you know establish a bond and a trust with them that sometimes they will tell them things 
that they won't tell anybody else and we can help get problems solved. And you're looking for volunteers in this area. I am. We were talking about this, um, and it's one day a week for just a couple of hours, mm -hmm. just to visit a nursing home, and you get to go, you're assigned a nursing home, so you actually get to go see the same people every week. Yes, and get to know them. That's the important thing. Which is really a neat thing. We're gonna have all the information. Um, but you also brought me a little brochure that tells me about um, it tells me about being an advocate and how to be a volunteer and all of this. So you can contact your office in Stevens Point mm -hmm. and we talk have with you directly. Toll free number that they can call, and any of the calls will be referred to me. And I hope that we can have some vo new volunteers here in Wapaka County. So how many are you looking for? Um, I would like to get at least five. Well, there you go. We will get the word out and um, find you five new volunteers to yeah. work with the nursing homes. I think it sounds like a wonderful opportunity to give of my heart. So it's, um, and you said some of your volunteers are retired? Yes, yes, some of our volunteers are up in their 80s. And so it really works and it's very flexible. Um, it's not a particular day of the week. You can go any day of the week, 8 to 8, any day of the week. That's fabulous. Well, thanks again for being on the show, Suzanne. I appreciate the information okay. a lot. Um, and um, we will look forward to helping you find some volunteers. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Joni, for having me. You bet. Next, we're going to visit a 4-H club and their animals. Can't do it all? Do what you can. Caring for others. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. We're in the backyard of Susan's house with the Casey Lake 4-H Club. We have Carrie, who is the Casey Lake 4-H Club leader, and we have her daughter, Alicia, who is the um, Wapaka County Ambassador. So welcome, gals. I'm glad you invited us over here today. Thank you really glad that you're here. Absolutely, this is fun. We have all kinds of animals we're going to be taking a look at. But tell me a little bit, Carrie, about the Casey Lake 4-H Club. Well, currently we have over 40 members in our own Wapaka Club and 13 leaders. So we are one of the larger ones in Wapaka County. And Alicia can tell you more about the Wapaka County numbers. We will, we will get to that. So you guys do a ton. Uh, we just had the fair a couple of weeks ago. So your members are all involved with, I was in 4-H. So, you know, I did the sewing and I did the baking and we have the animals. You have all of that kind of stuff covered with the club? Correct. Um, we have those traditional projects that have been going on for 100 years because 4-H is quite old. And then we have the new projects like your... Um, photography projects and um, other projects that would include scale models for those that um, not everyone has the opportunity to live on a farm and actually raise chickens and rabbits and and raise cattle so we want to make sure there's something for everybody in 4-H. For those of you that don't know a lot about it 4-H um, is really geared toward helping kids prepare for life and they do all kinds of stuff as clubs and as single members. So tell me Alicia what you do as the ambassador. Um, as an ambassador I travel around the different meetings and sometimes countywide events and I help the children and also some of the leaders and help promote 4-H. And you promote this at places other than 4-H clubs right? Like where? Um, we. We promote it at schools and open houses, um, libraries, and pretty much anywhere else where they'll take, where they'll allow us to. Well, that must be kind of a fun job. Are you doing this for a year or is it two years? Um, it's a yearly thing. You have to redo it again the next year. So you, so are you planning on applying again next year? I am. Cause so you're having a lot of fun. I do. I enjoy it a lot because there's a lot of different activities that I get to travel to. Okay, so you have 470 members. Um, she's an ambassador, she's not expected to know everything. And you have 18 clubs yes. just in Wapaka County. Yes. Have you visited all the clubs, most of them? We have visited a few of them. There's so many that we don't there's really. There's other ambassadors too. Yes. Oh, so you're not the only ambassador. There's, there's four others. 
So that's that's fabulous. So how long has the Casey Lake 4-H Club been in existence? Do you know? Um, my great grandma, uh, Jerain would be their great grandma, started the club in the 50s. And I don't have an exact date, but we are one of the older clubs in Wapaka County as well. 4-H, you know, stands for the typical 4-H's, which is your head, heart, hands, and health. And, you know, it used to be your basic loyalty to your community. And now they've really focused on how you can branch those um, 4-H's out there for the betterment of your community, but also your personal skills um, and learning how to be empathetic um, and empathy towards those in need and really be out there and serving our community. And I think that's what our club really works at doing. We go to Bingo at Bethany. Um, we really like to get out there and help our community when we see a need. That's fabulous. Because it really what you guys are all about is helping kids grow into being well-rounded adults. And you're doing a good job. And being an ambassador must be helping you do that. It's great for a resume, too, just in case you want to know, right? Right. Because you'll need a resume one of these days, right? Yeah, and yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to go take a look at some animals now. How are you, Cynthia? Good. How are you? I'm good. How long have you been in the Casey Lake 4-H Club? I've been in the Casey Lake 4-H Club for three years. You're having the time of your life, I'll bet? Yeah. You have, we have squeakers here. Tell me what kind of duck this is. This is an Ancona. And it just wanted the microphone. Um, he's just beautiful. You won't see this on camera, but he's got this um, black feathering that with some forest green in it. That's beautiful. But he does a great trick I've never seen before, so I want you to show us what he does. And he just lays on, he's paddling. He lays on his back and he just stays there. I've never seen a duck do this. Do all ducks do this? Um, not really, but like when you have a bigger duck like this, they will stay here. I do work with them enough. And so he's just trained to stay there. It's not because he can't get up. Yep, he like he'll if he's calm, he'll stay here for as long as you want him to. Do you have other rabbits besides Mr. Lop? Yeah. I'm here with Dalton, who's a member of the Casey Lake 4-H Club, with two pygmy goats named what, Dalton? Snowflake and Nario. And I'll bet you the white one is Snowflake. Yep. So how long have you been a member of the Casey Lake 4-H Club? Two years. Well, did you show these guys at the fair this year? Yes. What did you show them in? Um, I show them in a bunch of glasses. I don't remember. Well, that's kind of fun. Did you bring home any ribbons? Um, yeah, I brought home six ribbons, two trophy, two plaques, I mean, and one trophy. That's fabulous. So you do a really good job. And these guys are the snowflake is a lap goat, which is all kinds of fun. But they are super cute. Thank you, Dalton. Yep. Three. I'm surrounded by all of the animals, including this beautiful little black kitten who wants to get away from me really badly. And we're surrounded by all of the 4-H kids. Just want to remind everybody, it's a great organization to be involved with for yourself, your kids, your grandkids. We will have the number up on the screen so that you can give the extension office a call. So what do we all want to do? Join 4-H! All right. Thank you, everybody, for inviting me over today. It was a ton of fun. Our next guest this afternoon, of course, is Monica Gardner with our Pet of the Month. And this month we have Cinnamon, mm -hmm. who is not very happy to be on camera. I think she's camera shy. I think so, too. You were telling me she's a little older. How old is she? Uh, at least 10. She's okay. definitely a senior kitty. So she qualifies for our senior adoption program, which so means if you're a senior citizen, you can have her for free. We want to highlight this afternoon Santa Claus mm -hmm. because you have um, pictures coming up with Santa Claus um, so I can bring my dogs. Right, or which cats. I'm planning on doing. Or, or cats. snakes. 
or, or whatever <laughs> rabbits or guinea pigs or or whatever and we can have pictures taken with santa claus mm -hmm. it is on um, the evening of wednesday the 13th of november thursday the 14th and then saturday the 16th so you can find all of that information on facebook and on your website as mm -hmm. well correct um so that's going to be kind of all kinds of fun and we can go home with like four by sixes or eight by tens, depending yeah, there's, on. There are different packages to choose from. I think the minimum package is $20. If you bring in a large group, you may pay a little bit more for the minimum package. Uh, but most of the prints will be delivered right on site, so you'll get to take them right home with you. And if you bring a USB key, I think for an extra seven or eight bucks, we'll put all your photos on the USB key for you. Oh, great. Because then I can matter? take them all home. Yeah. yeah, she isn't thrilled with this today. I don't think she likes sitting still. She's, um, she's a beautiful cat, though, <laughs> and she's very friendly, mm -hmm. you know. So, well, thank you, Monica, for coming on the show. Thank you, Cinnamon, for being here today. <laughs> and we will see you next month yes. with somebody else. Right. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of What's Happening Wapaka. Everyone here at WIND TV wishes you a very happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you again next month.